Um, so we'll do some introductions um, after we get done. I'm going to do this introduction video and uh, introduce you to uh, some of the content and the people that we're going to work with uh, throughout the term, at least work with in the sense of uh, the content. Uh, so how many of you are familiar with Dave Ramsey? Have you heard of Dave Ramsey on the on the show, radio show, or maybe somewhere else? Um, so he's kind of one of the personal finance gurus out there. There's a few of them out there that are kind of um, in the media. And so uh, he's got kind of a full-blown system with the college curriculum um, that I really love and use myself personally. And so uh, we're going to watch an introduction video here for starters, and then we'll do some introducing amongst ourselves and wait for those other guys to come in. So, okay. So that's uh, Dave and his daughter. Um, and these videos are a little bit older. He, I think he said he's been doing this for 20 years, so he's definitely been doing it for 30 plus years now. Um, so he mentioned net worth as a six pack of Red Bull or something like that. Um, does anybody know what net worth is? Okay, good. That's a good start. Um, there's you want to take all of your assets combined, and then you got it. There's one more element to it. So that's the first step. Let me put that uh, as Taylor, right? Yeah. So net worth is the dollar value of assets. Let me get rid of this uh, word here. Dollar value of assets is what Taylor said here. And then, but to calculate your net worth, you got to do one other little thing to that. So you add up your Red Bull, you add up your laptop, you add up your car, you add up um, everything you own, the dollar value of everything you own. And then I saw a hand up. There's one more adjustment you need to make to this to calculate your overall net worth. Liabilities, good. So what's your name? Samat. So what do we need to do with the liabilities? Subtract them. So the dollar value of everything you own, and then if you owe some people some stuff, you're going to subtract that off because that's a claim that somebody has against you. So we're going to subtract the dollar value of liabilities if you're taking kind of the, the um, uh, accounting class. How many of you are in Professor Wagner's accounting class, either this term or last term? Nobody? Really? Okay. So for this class, I like to keep it real simple. We're not even going to use usually the words assets and liabilities, especially if I know that none of you have really had much accounting. Then I'll, then I'll really steer away from those words. Sometimes if you've had the uh, little bit of accounting, that, that might be helpful. So your net worth is the dollar value of your assets. So I like to just say what you own minus what you owe. So if you owe nothing, which is going to be kind of the... Uh, mantra of this class is to try to remain debt free or to, if you have debt to get rid of it, then it is back to what Taylor was saying is that your net worth is everything you own. And so you're going to add up everything you own today and that is your wealth. So if you're a millionaire, then you've got this number, this minus this equaling at least a million. So if this is 4 million, but you've got 3 million worth of debt, Four minus three is a million, you're still a millionaire. Or if you've got no debt and you've got a million here, a million minus zero is a million, you're still a millionaire, right? So it's the difference between what you own minus what you owe. And so Dave's comment in the intro video is that his net worth was equal to a six pack of Red Bull or whatever he said. So next to nothing as college students. Is it possible for this number to be negative for you as a human being? Is it possible for that number to be negative, meaning you owe more than the stuff you own? Is that possible? It is, yeah. A lot of you are probably in that boat, or you're starting to get in that boat if you're a freshman getting into student loan debt. If you start to leave out of university here with $30,000 worth of debt, and you've got a debt-free car to your name of $5,000, 5,000 minus 30,000 is a negative $25,000, right? So you can have a negative net worth. Unfortunately, there's a lot of Americans that are in that boat. And part of the reason we want you to take this class is to learn how to get out of that boat if you're in it and to stay away from it. 
So we're going to try to build this up. And then over time, when it gets retirement age, you're going to need this number to be at least a million dollars to probably live the lifestyle minimum of lifestyle. Now, I know a million dollars sounds like a, a million miles away to you, but it's not. It's actually right here. You can make changes in your life today that'll make that very realizable. And that's what we're gonna do in this class is kind of go through the steps of how you can make that happen. It's actually pretty freaking easy, believe it or not. It's pretty easy if you implement these right steps, especially as a 20 something, it's pretty easy to become a millionaire. A little bit harder to become a 10 millionaire but that's doable too, multi-millionaire. But to get up to a million, you guys can do it, trust me. I mean, it would take, uh, you know, a really awful event, which, you know, similar to COVID, dying of COVID being 0.0003%, uh, it's probably not gonna happen to you. And so short of that type of thing, a lightning strike happening to you, you guys can be millionaires. It's not that hard. All right, so let's get into the syllabus here to get in a little more details. So I'll take, I'll just kind of sprinkle a few of out of here since without my mask on, I can't pull my tongue out and separate these very easily. There we go, I guess I'm happy. Sprinkle it around, there should be a few extras. Okay, I'll take the extras. All right. Okay, everybody good with that? Okay, so let me give you a little bit more on myself. So um, I told you I've been at Ottawa for 10 years. I've been teaching personal finance about nine years of that 10. I think I started teaching right away. Um, I actually have my PhD in economics, so I'm the econ guy around here, although we have a, a second econ guy as well, uh, Dr. Peter Jacobson. Um, now he just joined forces here last August. Um, so I handle all the economics majors and that sort of thing. Uh, but I really got my start in the real world. So um, when I was all but dissertation for my PhD up at Iowa State University, uh, the guy who I was scrubbing toilets and mowing lawns and renting apartments for offered me a slice of his real estate business. So I jumped on that opportunity, uh, conditional upon being able to continue to teach here uh, at Iowa State at the time. And so I got my real estate license and my broker's license, kind of ran a small sales operation. Uh, but we primarily specialized in college student housing. We had about 800 apartment units across the street from Iowa State. And then slowly but surely kind of dabbled in a little bit of everything with real estate, um, flipping houses, uh, subdivisions, uh, land speculation. Um, after that, the, uh, uh, I was looking for a tenant for a uh, commercial space that we had. We couldn't find one, so we got into the uh, sports bar and grill restaurant business, for better or for worse, mostly for worse. Uh, there was a fraternity sitting vacant a couple blocks from our office that we redeveloped into a 13-room bed and breakfast kind of boutique hotel. Uh, and we ran that for uh, a while. Um, my wife's a horse person, so I'm a horse supporter. And she ran a 50-horse barn doing lessons and training and boarding and equestrian type stuff. So I'd like to give you a little of that background information so that you know on top of all the academic textbook stuff, um, we're going to give you a little dose of what it means to be in debt as well. I've signed on to millions of dollars of debt. We had a, our, one of our projects sold for uh, $52 million. It was the largest sale of private property in the state of Iowa. Um, when my mentor uh, passed away um, and we ended up having to, to break things up. Now, I only had a little tiny slice of that 50 million, really tiny, actually, because I was a young guy and I was kind of the, the uh, thinker and kind of putting deal maker together. And so basically I would uh, help put deals together and I'd get a small slice of ownership. 
But with that small slice of ownership, I still had to sign on to uh, some debts. And then over the years, got bigger and bigger. And then the uh, 2008 came around. You guys know what happened in 2008 in terms of the economy? Is it going up or down? Down. So that's the financial crisis time. And about that time, they quit passing money out like candy to guys like me. Now, all of a sudden, real estate development wasn't nearly as fun as it used to be when you couldn't walk into a bank and ask for a million dollars to do some project and they were falling over themselves to give you more. And uh, the economist in me predicted we weren't going to get back to doing business that way for a long, long time. So um, I had to kind of work through all of that mess where during a financial crisis like that, I've got a lot of debt, which is no problem when I have tenants that are paying lots of rent money for me to pay my debt payments, right? But what happened to their money that they can do use to pay rent when the whole economy is going down? It kind of evaporates, right? And so now they can't pay their bills, making it hard for us to pay our bills, right? And so that kind of spirals uh, into, into issues. And so I made it out of it uh, alive. I, I, made, I made a lot of money over time, by the way. And I've lost a lot of money. I'll, I, I like to tell people that I probably will, I've probably lost more money than you'll ever make. But I'm still doing all right, right? You can manage your way through it. Through that time for myself, kind of similar to Dave, I really have come to appreciate the type of stuff that we're going to talk about in class and how you can manage your funds to leave yourself in a more protected position. Hindsight 2020, I look at what I did as being a little too much debt, a little too much leverage is what we call it in the business, right? So you go buy a $5 million property and maybe you take on $4.5 million worth of debt. So you got a $5 million property, $4.5 million worth of debt. You're still to the good, 500,000. But if your $5 million property takes a 10% drop, all of a sudden, some of that net worth and value disappears, right? And so there's things that you can do to protect yourself against that. And that's exactly what we're going to learn in this class. Things like emergency funds and um, watching your, your debt level. Um, in the case of uh, the debt level here of student loan debts, being super aggressive at getting rid of it, right? That's something that's in your control um, to kind of really uh, crank off and get rid of that debt. So that's some of the real world stuff that I'll bring to the table here as we work through these uh, topics in personal finance. Um, any questions so far? I'm going to go through the class list. And what I'm going to say your last name, if you can say your first name. And I meant to have this printed off, but I was having trouble with my printer. Try a digital version here. So my computer doesn't poop out on me. My battery seems to not last very long. All right. So I'm going to say your last name. You tell me your first name or nickname or however you want to go by. So uh, Ali? Okay. And where are you from? A little louder, especially with the uh, Detroit. All right, Detroit Rock City. I'm a big Kiss fan. You ever hear about Detroit being a special place for Kiss? <laughs> okay. All right. Well, it's a kind of a famous thing. So, all right. And um, what uh, was your last job? What was your? I'm going to have everybody say this. So, what was the last job that you had, Smart? Amazon, like doing fulfillment stuff for the warehouse deal? Okay. All right, cool. Uh, B short? Daily. Daily. All right. And where are you from? Kansas City, Kansas. Kansas City, Kansas, the good side of the tracks. Okay. And what was your last job? Um, after school care at a Catholic school. Okay. After school care. Banano. Uh, banano. Banano. Oh, Kevin. Kevin, okay. Where are you from? Uh, Los Angeles. LA, oh, okay. I, thought, I was hoping I had somebody from LA. 
Um, before I get into that, well, yeah, what's what's going on in LA? It sounds like my brother-in-law lives there, and today I just heard on the radio too that COVID is crazy again or something. Yeah, everything's locked down, and it just makes me think that maybe they've been too locked down or something. I don't. It's just persisting, right? I mean, I mean, I know LA's got a lot of population, but have uh, you seen cases? Like people have had it in you, your family, or neighbors, uh, or my dad works at a hospital nearby where I live, and uh, the hospital is taking more people. Yeah. So I think he's had it. He just got the vaccine for my mom, so okay. They're good. So they're healthcare workers. So. Yeah. Okay. All right. And what was your last job? I worked in and out. Now we're in and out. Oh, I'm a Whataburger guy, so we don't have either up here in Kansas. But uh, yeah, I don't. Those shoestring fries just don't do it for me. Um, Capriati. Capriati? Capriati? No Capriati. Yeah. Curtis. Yeah. Oh, there you are. <laughs> Las Vegas, okay. And last job? Nanny, okay. Taking care of some people. Um, so do you know uh, Liz Lobato? She's from Vegas. She's a senior now, probably here. She's one of my econ students. So. I, you know, Vegas is such a small town, I thought I'd ask. Uh, Kirby. Josh. Josh. All right. Where are you from? New Jersey. New Jersey. And last job? Working in a bar. Doing what? Everything. You look like a big guy. Are you bouncing people? What are All right, uh, great. Wow, that's an awesome name. Um, great to Peralta. Yeah. Is that close? Yeah. Yeah. All the consonants. All right. Nina. I'm sorry. Nina. Nina is what you go. Yeah. Nina. Nina. Okay. All right. And where are you from? Vegas. Vegas too. Okay. Yeah. And last job. UPS. UPS. Doing like packing at their place? Yeah, I just ordered coffee. Okay, I wasn't thinking you were a driver, but I don't know. Maybe you look too young to be a driver, most of the UPS drivers. Uh, Hamilton. Okay. Okay, yeah, you're local. And my job, Climate County. Was what? Climate County. Climate County, what's that? Uh, County and Tax County. Oh, okay. And you were helping assist there or something? Yeah. Okay, good. And you had my wife for uh, Spanish. Yeah. That's right. You got, yeah, that's right. From the other one. Okay, good. Uh, Kessinger. Okay. Where are you from? Here. Where? Ottawa. Ottawa, here. Okay. Gotcha. So you are local. All right. Now you're not Coach Kess. Really? Gosh, I started here 10 years ago. I think I saw you when you were this old. Walking into your mom's office. Okay. Uh, so Caleb's mom, Amy, works across the way for me for the last 10 years. And then, of course, uh, Coach K. So, all right. So, what's your last job? UPS. UPS. Okay. Where did you go for that? Up to Lawrence? Um, I, worked, I worked at Overbrook, which is like 25 minutes away. Okay. I was the driver at Overbrook, so I just took the taxi. Oh, really? Huh. Gosh, that's kind of funny. I've almost never seen two people in a UPS truck. That's kind of a new thing. Uh, Linkos? Alyssa. Alyssa? All right. Where are you from? Maryland. Maryland. All right. And last job? Waitress. Waitress. So what type of place? Pizza. A pizza place. Is it good pizza up in Maryland? Kind of similar to East Coast, New York style, folded or something with pizza? Or? Okay. Well, that's too bad. It's always bad if you don't work at a great pizza place. Uh, was it good? It was okay? All right. Tips were good, though? Okay. All right, we'll talk about budgeting for tip type work, too, for uh, unknown amounts of money. Uh, McBride. Connor. Connor. Where are you from? Oh, there's a nice place to be. 
And what's your job? What? After school care for kids, like grade school kids or something. Okay. Uh, Owen? All right. And you're an in and out guy, apparently. Oh, you are a Whataburger guy. Okay, the way you were disgusted, I thought, when I said I was a Whataburger and you were kind of hanging your head. I thought you were in support of in and out. So, okay, where are you from? That's pretty Texas. Okay, so Texas, that would be Whataburger country. 30 years of Okay. And what last job? Um, actually doing production, like production manager. Okay, for what? Uh, it's an esports e e organization. Oh, okay. Are you part of the esports program here? Yes, okay. All right, good. Um, Peregrino. JC. JC. Okay. Where are you from? Las Vegas. Las Vegas. Gosh, we got lots of Vegas people in here. Okay. I've been looking forward to getting back to Las Vegas. I used to go there about once a year for conferences and stuff, but it's been kind of uh, not so much on that travel program here recently. And last job. I was a retail manager. Retail manager for what type of place? Uh, like clothing stores. Okay. And that was, was it in uh, the Las Vegas area or not on the strip, I assume? It was on the strip. It was on the strip, which one? Uh, do you know where Planet Hollywood is? Yeah. Oh, you know, in that mall in the Planet of Hollywood. Yeah, I stayed at Planet Hollywood a couple of yeah. Went and saw kind of a cool show at that tucked away theater way back in the back part of that mall. There's kind of a, they do like small shows, small venues, but it was a, uh, oh, what do you call the guy who dangles the thing? Hypnotist. It was super funny. Yeah, it was a good show. I was surprised that that place even existed back then. Sequina? Uh, yeah. And what well, is that? Did I? I must have butchered that last yeah, name. That was good. Okay. All right, Hannah. Where are you from? Vegas. You're Vegas. Okay, this is getting kind of weird almost. All right. So what, was it four Vegas? We have four now. Okay. Okay, barista. And you were in our book club last time. We did a book club. Uh, book Bitcoin book club last semester, and Hannah was a part of that. Did you ever do your fifty dollars worth of Bitcoin? Yeah, you still can. Come and see me. Oh, you, you missed out though. So Bitcoin, we're gonna tell. I'm gonna tell you in this class to not buy Bitcoin, right? But Bitcoin's kind of a new thing, and it's gonna be a big thing down the road. But I would never tell people to invest in Bitcoin. But we did this book club, and we did. As part of the participation, we usually give an honorarium of some sort. A lot of times it's in cash, but because it was Bitcoin, we're like, oh, let's give them Bitcoin. So I went and bought $100 worth of Bitcoin um, just because yeah, well, I had to learn the process. So I have it on Coinbase here. When was that? October? Late October is when we finished up, right? So late October, so November, December, that's pretty much it, January, so two months. My Bitcoin uh, balance is $237 on a $100 in. So if you would have did it then, it would have been way up. So it's, it's probably going to go down. We're going to explain. I'll probably show, show you this later why you should not get into Bitcoin because uh, of the ups and downs of volatility and all the other stuff. We're going to talk about the fun stuff of investing. But nonetheless, I did kind of hit the jackpot. And I'm kind of wishing I would have put a little more money into it. But hindsight's 2020. All right, uh, Sullivan. No Sullivan. Uh, Taseka. Tasaka. I'm Taylor, and I'm from Wichita. And I'm a sales associate at Dispensable Safety Supply. It's a store where just to get their products like wholesale. Oh, like commercial, like Sally's Beauty Supply. Yeah, we're like Okay. Uh, Tholen? Yeah, Gunner. Gunner? All right, where are you from? Oh, Missouri. Missouri, where? That's a big state. Oh, no, it's Rexel. It's Rexel. Okay, no, no. Yeah, is there a college there, though? Outside of Oh, 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 it's just across. Yeah. Okay, across the, across the way. All right, what was your last job? Oh, Amazon. Amazon, all right. You're going up to, like, Gardner? Yeah. Thomas? <laughs> 
Jerry's. Yeah. All right. And where are you from? Chicago. Okay. And last job. Motorola. Is that what you said? Doing what? Phone with sales or manufacturing or? Well, no, no, no. Oh, the warehouse. Okay. Is it doing that type of thing? That's a popular job now, for sure. That's emerged in today's economy. Timlin. Uh, Abby. Abby. Okay. From Des Moines. Really? Iowa. Yeah. Okay. And I worked at a country club. Which one? Here. Um, Echo Valley. It's in Norwalk. In Norwalk. Yeah, I think I golfed that golf course once upon yeah. a time. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you're, so you're from Des Moines, so do you, uh, you, did you ever go down to 3rd and Court Avenue? For? Uh, like right downtown for Farmer's Market and yeah. that stuff, 3rd yep. and Court. There was a building there that used to have Legends American Grill. Yes. Right on the corner. Yep. That was a building I did. Oh, with really? Some yeah. yeah, it's not Legends. So we were kind of the ones that, um, oh, there's been things written up. It, it, we were one of the first ones to redevelop that area. So we used uh, federal, state, and local historic tax credits to renovate that building. It was an old warehouse building that we turned into a, a five venue commercial place. And there was five restaurant bar tech places. And we had a 900 person live music venue up on the top floor. And so that was one of our, one of my commercial ventures that um, went pretty well early on. And then that has troubles, ups and downs and uh, all kinds of fun stuff. But, um, I sold out my shares when I came down here, but my business partner still owns that. I have a couple. Actually, I just went to um, on vacation with my friends that still own a share of that building. So, all right. Uh, Woods, words worth. Yeah, Brady. Brady. I'm from Casey Mo, and then my last job was landscaping. Landscaping. Okay. All right. Anybody here that I didn't list off? that you just added lately or something, because I think I downloaded this last night. All right, so that is our list. I saved this class list here, and maybe I'll just shut it down. All right, I'll save it. Hopefully that'll save. Okay. Um, so let's go, so those of you who um, were on Zoom, the couple of you that were on, so I have that set up as an alternative for you get quarantined or COVID or um, if, if you are traveling for a uh, sport, basically university excused absence. Um, but I also would allow you, if, uh, if you're, you have to ask basically for permission or tell me you're gonna be on there or if you just show up on there, like don't come, you know, if, if you're, not feeling well or whatever, just show up and but I'll I'll probably ask, oh what's up? You know, why are you on, on Zoom today? Or if you tell me that you're um, you're going home Friday because your grandma's sick or a funeral or something, then you can use it for that too. So um, so basically anytime you you can't uh, show up here, you are are welcome to join on that. So I sent out the calendar invite. So if you want to accept that calendar invite even though you're, you may not ever use it during the term, um, it'll show up on your calendar somewhere so that you can have the link and it's easy to find later rather than, you know, four weeks from now, you're like, oh, what was that Zoom link? And it'll just be on there for class. All right, so here's the top part of the syllabus. Uh, let me go ahead and put this up. Okay, so we are Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday till 1010, and I am really, really bad. You know, we all have things that we're good at, things that we're bad at. I'm really bad at letting up class early. So you can pretty much bank on 1010. Um, so don't start packing up early. We'll usually run something. I'll figure out something every once in a while. Right now, on the flip side, I really try very, very hard not to run class long. Either. So it'll be... Uh, usually right up till 1010. So just kind of uh, expect that that would be the, the case here for the ending time. Um, and starting time, if you, uh, I don't mind if you come in late. So if you uh, end up oversleeping or something, feel free to come in. If you start making it a regular habit, you know, we might have a talk that you're coming in late every single day. Uh, so I do expect you to be here on time. Um, but uh, don't, 
don't skip class just because, oh, I don't want to come in because I'm going to be, you know, I'm 10 minutes late or I'm 30 minutes late. Feel free to come in 30 minutes late. That's, that's no big deal. Um, so our materials here, so I have uh, some uh, uh, times, so my email. Uh, also, please leave your phone number. It might be easier if you have a question for me to just give you a call back um, if you have a question on something. So this middle section here is probably the most important part. Um, we have a online access code. And if you want to write on your syllabus, this is our bookstore only. The way that this publisher does it, you cannot go on Amazon, you can't go on Chegg, you're gonna have to buy the stuff and you're going to have to buy it through our bookstore. Now, as an economist, I hate that, that there, you know, there, there's a monopoly and doesn't seem like there's a lot of competition, but um, for this particular class, the uh, Dave Ramsey does their own publishing and so they sell their content for this class directly, they work directly with our bookstore. There is other Dave Ramsey content online all over the place. Uh, he's, he's got tons of stuff, but none of that stuff is the right stuff for this class. So you are going to have to buy it. Um, I already told you I'm gonna make you a millionaire, so it's relatively cheap, right? No matter what it runs, it's relatively cheap. So get the content um, and it's gonna have everything you need in there. It's also going to be, I don't really use Blackboard. Um, there might be some unusual circumstances where I might use it as a tool, uh, but otherwise the management system that we use for uh, this, which I'll get into here in a bit, is all right here. So you'll be uploading your homework, uh, exercises, taking some uh, section tests. Um, if you miss class or I might assign a video, so like that video that we just watched, all of those videos are housed in the site as well. And then the, the content for reading is in there as, uh, in also. Um, so this book is in digital form. I keep pointing up here. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna this over here. So this is one of the early dashboards on the content that shows you the the chapters, there's 12 chapters. And then as you blow up each one of these, like here, let me just show the e-text and reading. So this is exactly what's in the print version as well. And so you can use this print version or what I really would like you to do is to get a physical copy of the book. Now the physical copy, you could go online and buy somewhere, um, probably pretty cheap because this hasn't changed very much over time. Or I have made a photocopy of the entire book. And as long as you've purchased this, you have the ability to print off each one as a PDF. So I don't have any problem handing you the whole book for you to take to the copy machine and press copy and copy the whole thing and make your own little free ring binder of it. And the reason that I want you to do that is that you are going to forget a lot of the awesome stuff that I'm gonna teach you on how to become a millionaire. You're gonna to get to your first job and they're gonna say, oh, well, you're in luck, Gunner. We have a 401k program. And so here's all the details on that. If you wanna just select from this list of 26 investments where you'd like to put your 401k money in. All of a sudden you're like, oh, I remember McCullough talking about some awesome stuff, becoming a millionaire. I have no clue what that is. If you have that three ring binder or this bound book, this one's got the color by the way, so it's a little nice and it's fairly cheap. I think you probably can find it for 20 bucks or so. Then you pull it off the shelf and you're like, oh, 401k, what chapter was that? Oh yeah, right here. Here it is, chapter 10. Oh yeah. 25% this, 25% this, 25% this. Right there, growth stock, mutual fund, large cap, small cap, international. That's how I'm going to organize my 401k for my first job, right? And so you always are gonna have this at your hand, at your fingertips. Same thing for like when we get into the insurance chapter, what should I buy? Should I have a $1,000 deductible or $500 deductible? What the hell is a deductible, right? 
want to pull this off. And yes, you have internet access, and I'm sure it's all out there. But when you've gone through the time that you've taken for this course, and you've worked intimately with all of this content, it will be much more valuable to have this right off your fingertips. Now, maybe some of you would want to digitally scan my PDF thing or whatever and, and keep a, a copy that way that you could pull off the shelf. Whatever you want to do, just have something that you can reference in the future. And I think it'd be very valuable for you. So any questions on that? So at a minimum, you need the online access and then they do have these available at the bookstore too. So you can buy them in tandem with each other or you can just buy um, uh, the access. And so here up in the upper right is the video. I think this is all like mobile fun, phone friendly. And if you, I will assign video homework. Let's see. Oh, I got this down here. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll watch a lot of the videos in class and then have discussion about the content. So each one runs about 15 minutes on average, anywhere maybe 12 to 17 minutes. And so a lot of what we'll do in class is watch video, uh, you fill in these blanks, part of your homework is filling in these blanks and uh, there'll be keywords that they pop up. And so you can jot those down by hand and, and enter them later, or you can bring uh, your laptop to class. If you are a laptop user, you need to sit in the front half of the class so that I know you're not goofing around too much on uh, the internet because I can usually tell by the other eyeballs that are looking at what fun stuff you're looking at. Um, so if you're a laptop user, just need to come up to the front half of the class and you can uh, do that um, while we're in class. Um, all right, questions? So can you buy? Can you just do this all online if you want you to go to the bookstore and purchase like that? No, it actually has to be from the bookstore. So what they did is they, and again, I don't know why they exactly do it this way in today's day and age, but they have like Ottawa University coded to, to them. Um, and so those codes get you into this particular section of this class. And then I'm allowed, then I can customize, like all, all the content that's in here isn't what's assigned. It's, I, I customize content and I bring in some outside content as well at different times in the class. So, so on the other thing I want you to highlight on your syllabus. Let me go back to it. So when you buy it from the bookstore, they're going to give you this first time login that'll be on the sheet. Does anybody happen to have it? Did anybody buy it yet? Did you? Did you have it with you? Yeah. So I can just show other people what, what it's all about. Great, thank you. Okay, so this is what you buy at the bookstore. And so he hasn't opened it yet. Once you open it, then it'll have the typical access code thing. And you go to that first time login, uh, foundationsandpersonalfinance.com, enter it in, and then you'll never go back to that site again once you register as a user. Um, it will ask for your email for part of the registration. And I suggest that you use the university email. You don't have to, but every once in a while, if you guys forget your password or something, it seems like it's been easier if students have used their uh, university email, but you don't have to um, when you register it. So then from here on out, this uh, email address is the one that you go to to see the content that I just uh, showed you. And it's rs.ottawa u. There's always a handful of students. So underline the u, like highlight the u. Students forget that u. And then it's like, oh, I can't get logged in. It won't let me into the system. And it's just because they forgot that u. So rs-ottawa u.agulixbuzz. We'll just call this thing buzz from here on out. But agulixbuzz is the weird uh, course site name. Okay, uh, and then we also have access to some sites that we'll use. This one, the foundationsu.com, and then we also have uh, every dollar. These are things that I'll bring up in class, but these are awesome. These are tools that are open to the general public. 
so it's a different different site than than this one, and that's kind of like a, an app basically for calculating interest or uh, other things that we'll do for budgeting. And then finally, this is kind of important. Um, you know how hard it is to find 800 numbers nowadays if you try to actually want to talk to a real human being. So if you end up having an issue logging in or passwords or whatever, uh, that is the phone number that you can call for Dave Ramsey support. So that's a good one to keep, uh, keep ready. All right, any questions? All right, so here is the setup. So there's 12 chapters. We're going to have a comprehensive final at the end of the class that'll be in class. Otherwise, all of the quizzes, tests, materials will really be on that online site. But the final exam will be cover all 12 chapters, and it is worth 25% of your grade. So I bring this up because you can get through some of the homework and tests without learning a lot, maybe. You know, you can kind of just kind of plow your way through it. Um, but if you do that, you're not going to score as well on the final exam. So you really want to be learning um, the content as we go through. So if you, the people who get Fs and Ds uh, in this class just didn't do their prep. We, we're going to do a lot of stuff. So prepare yourself to be engaged in doing some homework and some exercises. Uh, there's a decent amount of stuff. If you miss one thing here or one thing there, it's not going to be a grade changer. Um, but the people who just don't do anything, those tend to be my Fs and Ds. So if you do everything, I'd say you're most likely going to get a B. If you were timely with doing everything and stayed on top of your work and just did it and did it diligently, not, not super hard, not, not killing yourself, but just the normal path, like get into a rhythm early on, um, you're probably going to get at least a B uh, in the class. Um, and then, you know, we'll see where the, if you didn't learn it very much as you kept up with it, then maybe the final exam will bring you down to a, a C or something if you, if you didn't really perform that well with it. Okay, so questions there on content coverage. In class activities, um, I like to basically give points. I'd say oh, most classes, I don't know what most means, 80% maybe, that will have in class activities that you will be part of your grade. So it's close to being an attendance point. Um, so just coming to class regularly, getting here, um, that is going to help your grade in more than one way. Of course, you'll be um, you know, covering the content and getting the uh, additional input that you need, plus just having those in-class activities as part of your points. And then sometimes we'll have homework that will be uploaded to Buzz. Um, so you'll have to, uh, you can use like a Word document usually or a PDF. Um, you can create PDFs with the printer. Uh, I don't know if all of you know that little trick. Um, usually a lot of the freshmen don't, but you can turn any handwritten document. So some stuff I don't mind handwriting. Some stuff I want it to be typed up. But some stuff might be kind of fill in the blank or it's handwritten. You can go to the copy machine in the library, make a photocopy, email it to yourself, and it turns into a PDF. And then you can just upload it onto our system. So um, that is how some of the content will be. And then other parts will be just fill in the blank or multiple choice or true false. All, all kinds of different activities. All right, so uh, if you look at these chapters, savings, budgets, debt, college essentials, friends and family, consumer awareness, bargains, credit bureaus. So a lot of the stuff that we're going to do is about 80% behavior. And the last content, especially, we'll get a little bit more into investments, insurance, retirements, real estate. I'd say it's about 20% finance. These are the numbers Dave Ramsey does, and I kind of like it. So he likes to say that personal finance is 80% behavior, 20% finance. What does that mean to you? What does that mean to you? 
Let's see, you're Josh, right? Yeah. Give me a number between one and, uh, or let, let's go four and nine. So, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Taylor. Um, I, I think that good. means that say you're really, really good at investing. Okay. You're great, you're making a lot of money, you're investing. That's your finance, but you also have like an online shopping addiction. Okay, good. So that's eight percent behavior. So even though you're making a lot of money, you're spending. Yeah, yeah, you can be spending a lot of money, right? So the twenty percent thing is you can be really good with numbers. How many of you consider yourself pretty good with numbers? I won't even say really good, but pretty good. You know how to run a calculator, maybe do some, some spreadsheets, crank out some numbers. So that is this part. Like that's not going to make you good at personal finance if that's all you're. You, know, you can do present value calculations, you can do Excel spreadsheets, you can crank out the numbers. That's 20% of personal finance. 80% is really digesting and kind of learning different things. You mentioned online shopping addiction or other things that you might be doing, how, how easily you're persuaded on spending. Uh, do you really think that saving is a good idea or not? And, and so we're going to try to equip you with a lot of the facts and data to show you that living your life a certain way um, isn't a bad life. In fact, it's a pretty damn good life. And it leads to a life that might have a million dollars up here. Maybe if you guys start in your 20s, maybe by the time you're 50 rather than age 65, you're at least a million to the good by age 50. That's a good place to be, right? Uh, I know that seems ancient to you. I'm 40, 49. Yes. I'm 49, but I feel like I still got a lot of good years ahead of me, and I just went to Cancun and had a lot of fun, and so... There's a lot of good life to be spent after age 50. And so you can still have a lot of good life when you're 20 and 30s too, by the way. Um, it just doesn't have to come along with some of the baggage that taking on debt might create. And so just having the big scope of things, kind of looking at your life trajectory and thinking about the consequences of doing something today and the impacts that that might be tomorrow is part of this behavior part that's so important for the class. All right, so down below, I've got some of the uh, specifics here on homework. Um, I've kind of mentioned this, so I might just kind of uh, gloss through these. Uh, one thing is that these are the easy points. And so you just need to do them. I mentioned about doing them on time. Um, I have a 20% late penalty. If you are 15 minutes late <coughs> or two weeks late, it's 20%. So 20% is a pretty good hit, right? So again, I'm trying to give you incentive to stay on time with things so that you don't get that deduction. Uh, because like I said, we are going to have a decent amount of content. So 20% late penalty. And But if you just do them, you just, but you just have to do them is the thing, right? So quizzes, tests, uh, the final exam, uh, bring a calculator and a brain full of personal finance uh, insights to the exam. Uh, In-class activities, so these will mostly be fun. In-class activities, fun and easy, 10% uh, of your grade. Uh, excused absences can make up the points by doing a writing activity from the end of the chapter, not as fun or as easy. Uh, so if you do miss because of a sport or COVID, well, COVID, you can be online, by the way, and participate in the in-class stuff. So when, if you're on Zoom, you are uh, counted and being able to participate with that. But if you're gone for a sport or a game or something, um, just let me know and you can make up whatever the in-class activity was uh, for that day. All right, um, flip it over. So use of personal digital devices. Turn off your vibrate and your ringer. Do not engage with anything outside of class. Turn on instant messaging, close email. You will lose points for not separating yourself from your personal device. Internal distractions like daydreaming, as well as good old fashioned disruptions of excessive talk with a neighbor will not cost you points, but might be subject to a verbal lashing or a different seating assignment at my discretion. So, uh, phones. I saw some phones out. Phones need to be off and in backpack 
or in pocket. Not on the desk. So go ahead and do it now. You can turn it off and get them into that right position. Um, every once in a while, I'll allow you to bring out the phone to use as a calculator or something. Um, but general protocol is to clear it off the desk and in the backpack. I, I, before you think I'm too mean and nasty, uh, remember that I am an economist and I've looked at the data and the research on this. And so it's pretty interesting, really. Uh, early on, they did some studies where they had uh, a number of students uh, at a university and there was three cases. One was on the desk uh, having your phone. Two was in the backpack. Three was in the dormitory. The phone was detached from the dormitory. And then they gave the students assessments on how well they were you know, staying um, engaged with class and stuff. Guess who performed the best out of those three cases? You have dorm, phone in dorm, phone in backpack, phone on desk. Guess who performed the best? Phone on desk? No, for sure not that. Phone in the dormitory performed the best. Now, I'm not going to pat you down each time you come in, but it's something to think about. Um, you know how you guys get that little twitch? Like, it's just like, <laughs> I gotta dig in there. Apparently, you know, that's a distraction, right? It kind of pulls you off your game. But if you physically know that you left it in the dorm room, you don't even do that, right? Whereas if it's in your backpack or in your pocket, you still have it kind of close by. Um, it still leads to some distraction. So it was the dormitory, the backpack, and then of course the least best was uh, phone on the table. So it's just something to think about even classes that um, you go into that the professor doesn't care if they're out and about. Um, maybe you want to tuck it away for your own good, right? Not, it's, it's okay to take a break from that sucker for an hour and 15 minutes uh, during class time and uh, let your mind go to other places rather than it being thrown at you. You kind of make some output going in of trying to grapple with different topics on your own. Okay, so again, you'll lose some points if you forget about that. I'll try to do some reminders. Um, now, the same goes for me. I forget to turn off my phone every once in a while. And so if this thing goes off while we're in class, then everybody who's present gets a point. So I'll forget to, it's no big deal, we just kind of roll on. So if your phone is out and about uh, or ringing or whatever, uh, you'll lose a point, but everybody gets a point if it happens to me. And it happens to me at least a few times a semester. So not a big deal, we'll just move on with life. All right, uh, attendance and participation, every now and then you may pick up a few extra credit points by dragging yourself to class and making through lecture mine. You may also earn some of these points correctly by uh, uh, by correctly answering, oh, I kind of butchered that, some of the tougher questions I stir up in class. And then I mentioned the ring there. Uh, academic integrity, don't cheat. The consequences can range from an F on the item involved to an F in the course and reporting to the dean. Um, so, you know, with all the software and stuff out there, the stuff that you're uploading, it's not real hard to see that you uploaded your buddy's paper or did something else. So just uh, do your own work, or if you can't get to it, don't copy your neighbors, just don't turn it in. I mean, like I said, you can, you can get away with not turning in a few things as long as you're not a regular person who misses uh, the due dates. Uh, writing format, APA, that doesn't really apply too much here for this. We have one short little reflection paper, but uh, not terribly worried about that. Um, so we got the student handbook, mission of OU, Ottawa student email is the official one. This is kind of the boilerplate stuff, Blackboard. By the way, the, the official, this is what I call kind of my syllabus cover sheet. Uh, the Blackboard shell has kind of all of the official syllabus stuff in it as well. Um, uh, ADA, if you have any uh, uh, issues that we need to talk about, make sure you come up and see me regarding that. Um, uh, commitment to diversity, statement on diversity, and there we go, access to the coordinators down at the bottom. Okay, that is the syllabus. Any questions there? Sound exciting? All right, let's have a quiz. Seems like a fun thing. Okay, everybody done? All right, pass your paper to a neighbor for grading. We're going to do this old school method. All right, question number one. 
Suppose you have some money. Is it safer to put your money into one business or investment or into multiple? What do you think, A, B, or C? B, multiple businesses? B is correct. So mark it wrong. If, uh, if somebody didn't put B, then just put a slash through the B to show which one it, it should have been. So if they missed the answer, if they circled A and it was B, then do that. So multiple businesses. Anybody, uh, a little bonus round, know what we call that when you put into multiple businesses as opposed to one? What are you doing with your portfolio? Diversify. Diversify, good, good, diversification. So that's the principle of diversification. Suppose over the next 10 years, the prices of the things you buy double. If your income also doubles, will you be able to buy more or less or the same, A, B, or C? B. So prices of things you buy double, but your income doubles, right? So when you go to the grocery store, if you were making 50000 a year, and now you're making 100000 a year, but everything on the shelves doubled in price, then you're going to put the same amount of stuff into your shopping cart. So B is correct. So the same as you can buy today. So that gets into the idea of inflation a little bit on why we need to be investing and feeding um, the inflation rate. Suppose you need to borrow $100. Which is the lower amount to pay back? 105 or 100 plus 3%. So 105, 100 plus 3, or don't know, A, B, or C? B. So you need to borrow, which is the lower amount? So what is this amount then, B? 103. 103. Good. So B is correct. So mark that wrong if somebody didn't get that. So given that count and interest, does it be more than 103? That, well, that is the interest. So we'll come back. This is just to kind of get a good, uh, we'll, we'll definitely cover this uh, later. But right now, 100 plus the 3% is $3. So it's 103, the way that, that one's worded. But you're right, there can be other uh, issues that can come into play if it was more complex. Number four, suppose you put money in a bank account for two years and the bank agrees to add 15% to your, or per year to your account. Will the bank add more money to your account second? Add the same amount both years? Don't know. A, B, or C? A, why? Because why? You have more money after the first year, right? It actually builds. So that's the idea of compound interest. So A is the right answer. So mark that one wrong if somebody didn't get that. Suppose you had $100 in savings account and the bank adds 10% per year. How much money would you have after five years if you did not remove any? How much would you have after five years? So 10% for five years, exactly 150 more than 150 less, A, B, or C? A, same reason. So the answer is A, because of compound, you get interest on interest, which we'll talk about a little bit more. Again, by the way, that's the 20% part of personal finance. So uh, not the most important thing in the class, but this one is A. All right, so this one, the grading is a little bit weird. So. Here's how you, I want you to grade it. If, if you missed one of these, it's a full point. But if you got only one of these, it's one. So I want you to give them a score out of four. So again, one, two, three, these are all worth a point. So if they missed one, it's minus one. But for the bottom one, as long as they got this one or this one, then, then it's correct. They would have to miss both of these to have a minus one. Any questions on the scoring? So everybody's out of four. They'd have to get one. All right. So you can return your papers, and we will be going over some data. This is a survey that's been given around the world. So we'll see how you guys did last next time. Pass those in. That's going to be in class points for you today. You can just show the person uh, what you got. You can just, as you guys exit, you can just pass in your papers up here at the top. See you tomorrow.